Welcome back. Well, tonight we are putting the spotlight on the changing perception around partnership. Data from the latest census shows more Canadians are choosing not to get married. From 1981 to 2021, there was a 447% increase in common law couples. That's compared to just a 26% increase in married couples over the same time. Journalist and author Liz Lenz is one of those people rethinking the way we approach relationships. Her new book, this American Ex-Wife, How I Ended My Marriage and Started My Life, dives into the politics of marriage and divorce. And joining me now from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, is Liz Lenz. Liz, thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I want to start with your own story. What was it about your divorce that led you to write a book about it? Well, I didn't initially set out to write a book about my divorce. <laughs> it happened... And I, you know, I remember going through it, it was awful, and I felt like I had personally failed. And once I got through the process, I was on the other side, I was sitting in a rented home, putting together IKEA furniture at 2 a.m., and I remember thinking, like, I'm actually really happy. You know, and I had noticed that um, despite being a single mother who was working full time, I was juggling a lot of jobs at the time. Yeah. And uh, I remember thinking like, wait, my workload is lighter. My house is cleaner. I feel a lot happier. And I started doing some investigation. Um, I'm a journalist by trade. And so I started learning facts like, you mm. know, that if you marry a man, he adds seven hours of domestic labor to a woman's life. I learned that single mothers tend to have, even if they have sole custody of their children, tend to have more leisure time, more time for activities and hobbies. And I was floored by what I was seeing. And then the shutdowns of 2020 happened. And I saw so many women who thought they had egalitarian marriages kind of carrying the burden of homeschool work and domestic labor and that's when i decided that this was a book i really wanted to talk about the weight of domestic labor how it's breaking an entire generation of women hmm. and how we can get free so so you felt freedom Yes, I felt incredible freedom. I was told that being, you know, a divorced single mother in her late 30s, I was going to be ashamed. A lot of books out there, you know, had advice for like getting back out there and finding a new man. And um, when I, you know, got to that side, I realized that that was the opposite of what I wanted and that I had actually, by being divorced, I'd actually found. 50-50 equality in parenting, right. and I would found happiness. Okay, so you, you certainly talked to a lot of women in, in writing this book, but is that enough to draw the conclusion that more women are turning to divorce because of a lack of support from their partners? You know, I didn't have to just talk to women. I had, I got to rely on, you know, just years and years of statistical research that's showing, you know, that like women are carrying the um, the the burden of of their domestic lives, even if women are out earning their husbands, even if women are the breadwinners in their families, they're still doing more domestic labor. And, you know, there's other research out there that I relied on, like the sociologist Jessica Calarco, who's out of Wisconsin, you know, who has done in-depth research into this, talking about how women are being the primary caregivers. Right. Um, for aging parents, for their husbands who can't find ketchup in the grocery store, and their children, and that this is what is causing women to just break and say, I don't want to do it anymore. And we can look at statistics that show that, you know, younger women are just choosing to opt out of marriage altogether because of this vast inequality. And older women, there's a growing segment of divorce called gray divorce, and it's older women, and these are the women who have done it right, right? Like they right. stuck it through, they got through the hard times and they're on the other side. And this is when society has told them they're supposed to be happy, but they're not. They're mad and they're fed up. And it's 70% of divorces are filed by women who are breaking. You know, let's talk about kids now. For parents considering divorce, you know, a huge consideration uh, is their, you know, the the life of their children, obviously. Was that a factor for you and how did you navigate that? 
You know, there's, um, yes, a lot of research out there really, really shames um, divorced parents. It talks about bad outcomes for children and all these kinds of things. And I really took that to heart when I was going through my divorce and I felt so awful. But once I started researching it and talking to the experts, I realized what's bad for children isn't divorce. It's when parents are fighting. It's those complications. And so you can divorce and do so peacefully, and that's good for children. Also, what's bad for children is staying in a home where there is where there is still a lot of fighting and they never get to experience peace. And then, you know, I learned that like there's also other like there's also other data that shows, you know, when children, um, it's not really divorce that's bad for children. It's just poverty. So when we support families, when we um, when we give them health care, right? When women can enter the workforce and have jobs that earn money, that's what's good for children. And there's a lot of research out there that's really misleading that talks about, oh, divorce is so bad for right. kids. But actually what's really, really bad for children is staying in a home where two parents are so unhappy and they're not getting along because, you know, what does that teach a child? And also, you know, we don't have a lot of research on those things too, because so much of our research is so biased, trying to shame women for leaving their marriages. But there's also a lot of studies out there that show in countries with liberal divorce laws, yeah. relationships last longer, kids stay in school longer and have better outcomes, and women earn more money and are less likely to be victims of domestic violence, for, which I think is huge. For, for, for single women, it, do you think this reads as kind of a, a, a warning, don't get married until you know <laughs> that this is the one? I think for single, you know, there's, so you're, you're kind of like doing exactly what I think the book breaks against is you're right. talking about there's only two options for women, marriage or being single. Right. And what I want to talk about is like how there's so many other options to live a happy life. You can have a long-term committed relationship. You know, you can have, um, you, there's polyamory, consider that. Right, there's a lot of ways to build a beautiful, big, happy life that aren't just marriage or staying single for the rest of your life. And so that's what I want to break against and say, you know, that there's there's so many beautiful ways to be a human in this world, and let's consider them and let's not force women into one box or the other. Let's just let them be happy. What, what's the feedback been like that you've gotten so far? You know, my email inbox is filled with women who are saying, this is me, this is my story. I have a lot of women who say that they are so exhausted and they're reading my book, but they have to hide it from their husband because they'll be so mad and angry. Um, there's, yeah, which I hate, you yeah. know, I hate that, you know, it, like a, a man feels so insecure by my book cover that he can't have his wife read it. You know, I also have a lot of married women emailing me and saying, yes, thank you for this book. It's it's helping me have better conversations with my husband. It's helping me articulate the ways in which I'm really unhappy and it's helping us fix them. I got an email from a man who said his ex-wife gave him the book and it really helped him open his eyes to see the ways that he had been um, functioning as a partner. You know, he thought he was so, he thought he was so pro-women and yeah. such a feminist until he read the book. And so, you know, I think there's a lot of backlash to this idea of celebrating divorce, but I think in people's normal everyday lives, they really want to talk about the ways in which inequality is affecting our lives and how do we get out of that. Really quick, because I, I see time is running out here, but concept of marriage, are you completely done with that? Could you ever see yourself getting married ever again or no? I am never getting married again, and here's why. The ways that we have structured our laws in society are really, really unequal. That marriage is founded on a fundamental inequality. It's founded on the laws of coverture, which subsume a woman's identity. And so while I am all for relationships, I love love and I love people, I never see myself becoming unequal in the eyes of the law ever again. The book is This American Ex-Wife, How I Ended My Marriage and Started My Life. The author, Liz Lands. Appreciate the time.
Thank you.